What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit, we're gonna expand on the idea of grouping geometry or not grouping geometry, but specifically with modeling with the sticky geometry or the faces and edges that are stuck together inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is more just a quick video, but I did a video last week or the week before talking about the difference between groups and components. And one question, I got was, well, why would you group anything? Why wouldn't you just create everything as components? And you can definitely do that. Like that's a valid way to do this. Um, so the reason that we create components is when objects are, when you have multiple copies of an object, they're all kind of linked together. And so if you change one, the others change as well. But in this situation, the reason that I would just group geometry is to avoid the geometry sticking together. And I always use this example, but if you have two boxes and they're both made of raw geometry, so you can see how there's no like groups in here. If you move them together like this, the faces are going to merge together. And now if I move around this box, the other geometry is going to move along with it, along with it. And so what that means is that means that these are now merged. And so making changes to each individual piece gets really kind of complicated because I can't go back in and edit either one of these boxes because they're separate geometry. And so grouping allows you to avoid this. So if I was to take this box and this box and I'll explode them, but if I was to take these two and I was to select them, right click and click make group for each one of these. And you could probably just do it with one of them as well. Now, if I move these together, the faces don't merge. Right, so group geometry isn't gonna merge with geometry in another group. Now, on the other hand, if these were both in the same group, so let's say we were to explode these, make them a group, and then double click inside of there and move these together, the geometry would still merge. So really what we're doing is we're separating that raw geometry is what we're doing. So I'm gonna undo this. We'll just put these in groups for right now. And so that's basically the concept behind why you would just quickly group geometry, um, especially for things like this set of walls. I would just group them. I wouldn't worry about it being a component because I'm never going to create a copy of these walls that I need to have multiple versions of. But what I wanted to talk about in this video is the concept of using this sticky geometry in order to help you edit your model. So for example, if you look at this object right here, basically what we've done is we've created a cylinder with a bunch of different edges intersecting the cylinder. So a bunch of circles on here. And I created this using the push pull tool. But now if I was to, for example, take this edge and use the scale tool to scale it, you can see how the geometry associated with this edge is going to adjust with the edge itself. And so what that means is you can actually use this geometry to model out different things. So for example, if I was to select this edge, tap the S key for scale, then I was to scale that about the center, you can see how this geometry moves along with that edge. So basically what we're doing is we're using the fact that the geometry between this this line and this line and this line and this line are merged in order to help us model. So it's part of a strategy for modeling. So what that means is I could also select this edge, move it up or down, and you would wanna probably lock that to the blue axis just so you don't get things going off into the distance by tapping the up key. But you can see I can use this to adjust the way this shape looks. And because the geometry is sticky, all of the geometry around it, whoops, is going to adjust with that. And so one thing to know about that is practically the way that I use that a lot of the time is let's say that I have a group like this one with all my walls in it. Um, usually I'll model out my walls a little bit separate from my windows because what I can do in this situation is I can double click inside of this and I can actually select the geometry on the inside of the window and I can use the move tool in order to move that around. Well, because this geometry is sticky, that means that I can use this to adjust this opening. And in a situation like this one, you could also use the push pull tool to extrude this. But I use this a lot of the time to just come in here really quickly and move this, especially if this was like split up into multiple faces. So if for whatever reason, this was split into multiple faces, push pull wouldn't work anymore because SketchUp can't push pull multiple faces at once. So I couldn't select both of these and push pull them, but I could select them 
and move them in order to quickly adjust this window. And so that also works for applications like this one, where let's say that we were modeling a countertop inside of a model and we added cabinets and these are just SketchUp cabinets from inside of the 3D warehouse. So on one side, I could come in here and I could push pull this face and one thing you could do if you really wanted to with a simple object like this is you could just move this group. But with a more complex object, what I might do is I might come in here, double click on this and just grab all of the raw geometry at once. So notice I've got the full edge, I've got the back face and I could just move them over. And so if I move them over, you can see how I could live adjust this really easily. And maybe we'd wanna select maybe a base point right here instead, but you can see how I can live adjust all of these different faces at once by selecting them. So I'm actually using the sticky geometry in here in order to do that. So that's kind of why I, or how I use sticky geometry. I use it to select things and quickly move them around in order to make quick changes inside of my model. Um, one kind of bonus tip on this is with an object like this, or this uh, cabinet, you can't really come in here and do that because everything is grouped separately, right? So like this face is grouped separately from this door, from the base piece. So I can't come in here. I could come in here and select one of these, but you can see how even then that isn't really going to work because these pieces are in separate groups. So you can't use the sticky geometry in order to move this. Um, so one thing you can do is you can use an extension called Fredo Scale. And so what Fredo Scale has is it has a number of different tools, and I will link to information about this in the notes down below. It has a number of different tools for scaling different options or different objects. And so in this situation, we want to look at the option for box stretching. So box stretching is a tool that's contained inside of Fredo Scale that allows you to stretch an object without deforming it, right? Because if you were to use the scale tool, on this object, and this might be dynamic, so I'm not 100% sure if that's gonna work. But if you were to use the scale tool on this object, you don't wanna scale things like the, the cabinet pulls because they'll get distorted. And so what this would allow me to do is this would allow me to scale my object from center. And I can click and drag this plane in order to scale this from the center points of each half of this like this and you can see how what this does is it'll scale this from the center um, from the points that we have selected and you don't get distortion on these cabinet pulls. So for something like this that's more complex, what you might wanna consider is you might wanna consider using this extension in order to scale things as well. But for simpler things, I usually use the sticky geometry inside of SketchUp. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Are you using sticky geometry in your modeling? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.